two Al Pacinos. There's the first, the first two where he's like, Fredo, I knew it was you. And then you get Godfather three, where he's like, Hoo, uh, hey, what are we doing? It's, <laughs> it's a game of inches. All right, let's start this bitch. So <laughs> I, so we just got hot off the press. We got Bump Williams, Nielsen numbers for Bud Light. Sorry to say they have not improved. In fact, they've gotten a little worse. Bud Light has actually broken the negative 30% mark on volume. And Ooh. that's for the week ending June 10th. So hmm. nine yeah. days ago. I was looking at it and most brands saw their trends decline from okay. the previous week. Yeah, And then AB offered their perspective and they said that it was their best week of share performance since April. They're using right. Circana data, so these are two different data sets. But right, but yeah, I mean, Miller Lite and Coors Light are still up double digits. Miller Lite's up thirteen point three, mm. and that's dollars. Coors Light on dollars is up eighteen point two. They're gaining share by the industry doing poorly, not by their performance improving. So, Modelo, if you look at year to date, Bud Light's still number one in dollars. Bud Light share is eight point nine. And Modelo's is eight share. But if you just look at that latest week, Bud Light share has dropped to 7.2. And Modelo Special is 8.4. So there is a case to be made that Modelo Special will be the number one beer uh, for calendar year 2023 if these trends continue just as they are. And it just it looks like Bud Light's trends have been ad- identical factoring in how the industry's done, they've been pretty much the same since early May. And so if we're looking at trend lines, I don't see this getting better. And I, it, there's a, I'd say there's a good case to be made for Modelo Especial for the year on, in dollars only and an off-premise only. Must clarify that. And then the other thing I wanted to mention before we bring in Jordan. Jordan. I had to ask Jordan, wait, is it base or pass? I know it was serious. <laughs> anyway, continue. Sorry. Jordan base. So over the weekend, I kind of surveyed all of the comment sections on YouTube, Twitter, Reddit, things like that about Bud Light. Interesting. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a special place of hell. Uh, so <laughs> I don't so recommend take it. take a bath after that? No. Yeah. There's really two things that I see that are constant. One is... Well, if they would just apologize, this would all go away. And of course, if they apologize, they'd have to say what they're apologizing for. And I don't know how they could do that without coming across as transphobic. So I don't see that happening. And the second thing that I keep seeing over and over is this is not a boycott. The media keeps calling it a boycott. This is permanent. This is just, and I was like, well, I mean, it seems like a boycott, but those are the Permanent two talking boycott. points. Yeah. And I don't know, it seems like the, these people are organized because the comments are real similar, like they have talking points. And I think it comes from the major streamers that are conservative streamers out there and the ones that I've identified as just hammering on Bud Light, if not every day, then almost every day, are Matt Walsh, some guy called The Quartering, Tim Cast, which is Tim Pool, and then not so much lately, but still Megan Kelly. So you put all those together, they get about a quarter of a million to half a million views on their YouTube channels alone every time they post. So you're considering millions of people are seeing this stuff every, almost every day, every, actually every day. So, and the rhetoric just keeps going because they get clicks when they talk about Bud Light for whatever reason, people love the story. So that's I just wanted to give that update before we bring base on. I mean, do y'all have anything to add to that? I just think it goes back to kind of what I was talking about on the last pod of them act, them seeing actual scan data and saying, because the thing I see a bunch from all those people you named is, this is working, right. let's keep it up. And right. I think that is what's propelling it and trying to get them to, okay, we did it with Bud Light. Now let's move it to... Someone else, right. put somebody else in the crosshairs. Uh, Target or Coles or whoever. But you're right. The scan data is self-perpetuating and it's very public. And the other thing I would say is that it's always Nielsen and who is the one that 
AB does not have a contract with. So Circana is who deals with AB. That is one of their main customers. So you're not seeing a lot of Circana data, but they're pretty, actually, they're pretty similar. So, all right, Jen, I'll let you introduce them since you're so good with names. I'm just kidding. I'm just being an asshole today. No, it's cool. And I'm obviously, I have a different setup today and you'll hear my kids. So I'll introduce him, ask a couple questions and then go on mute. Jordan, Jordan, are you there? Mr. Bass, (laughs) Mr. Bass, Bass. you know what? The kids would call you based. All right. All right. Sounds cool. How's it going? Good. How are are you? you? Good. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me back on. I mean, we should say it's actually Jordan Bass with hot water. So, but we had a good time on the last podcast and it's great to have you back. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's good to be back. I wanted to come back to just get an update on how your one wheel riding is going, Harry. (laughs) It's actually going great. Like I've really improved. I've done over a thousand miles on the, on one board and about a hundred miles on another board. However, the group ride here in San Antonio, somebody really badly injured themselves last week. And so now I'm a little gun shy, but he wasn't wearing a helmet. So I always wear a helmet, but yes, in answer to your question, not to bring the whole thing down, it's changed my life. I love it. I do it every single day, usually two or three times a day. So thank you for asking. Thank you. Nobody else cares. Nobody asks about my strange hobbies. We don't have to ask about it. Right. <laughs> exactly. About it. It's like you're a vegan, right? Touche. <laughs> someone's a vegan. Don't worry. They'll tell you about it. Yeah. So with that, I would like to welcome back to the show, frequent beer net radio guest, Jordan Bass, founder of Hopwater, one of the top brands in the hop water space with triple digit growth at retail. And we chatted, I think it was in February about some of the exciting things you guys have going on. And now that it's almost summer, we've got an update, new flavors and partnerships. You guys are at select retailers across 48 states now and triple digit growth at retail. So let's talk about your newest flavor, grapefruit, which is just rolling now, but also how did May Fighter Dustin Poirier get involved. I didn't know that hop water was so hardcore. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, well, first of all, let me crack a can to enjoy during our podcast. Nice. So yeah, so grapefruits are ruby red. Ruby red grapefruit is our newest flavor. We're really excited. Launched on our website today. And I'll be rolling out in retail this fall. So when we look at the short answer of why kind of ruby red is, we believe in consumer-led innovation. and. Grapefruit was the number one most requested flavor by our customer community. So when they ask, we deliver. The kind of more detailed answer is that we've got a pretty robust innovation process. We look at both kind of desktop consumer research, right? Trending flavors. When you look at grapefruit, it's a proven flavor within the craft beer space. Also, when you look at sparkling water, it's the number two volume driver in sparkling water. It's the number three fastest growing flavor. So check, check. And then, as I mentioned, we surveyed our own consumers. They liked it. Another check. And then we ran, and we do this with all of our flavors, run kind of a proprietary digital testing process to validate that consumers really love the innovation that we're coming up with. And we saw that worked really well. And so that was kind of third check the box. Plus, it tastes delicious. And we know consumers love bold flavors. So, yeah, we're excited to launch that. Um, And then on Dustin, the Dustin story is one of my favorites, actually. So. Back in 2021, he was training for a fight in Vegas and he tagged us organically. He tried the product, tagged us. I still, even today, I still go in and respond to almost all of the posts when people tag us on social. You get a creepy thumbs up or pray hands from from me if you tag us. And so, so I saw when he did, I was like, okay, who's this guy with a blue check mark? Let me respond. And we ended up jumping on the phone with him like, Within a couple of days, we thought it was going to be his agent or something. He jumped on live right before his fight, loves the product, drinks it when he's, when he's training. And so, so we decided to partner with him after his fight. And from the very beginning, he'd been asking for grapefruit. That was like his top flavor request. So when, after it went through our innovation process, we're like, okay, we, he's a pretty intimidating guy. Didn't want to go against him. So we figured. Yeah. You think that's a, that is a great story because it was, it's organic. I mean, so, so many of these celebrity type endorsements are not organic and you can kind of tell the consumer is pretty smart these days and for, to have it be organically, like he kind of reached out first on, on social media and then you got together. He likes the product. I like that. You know what? Celebrities aren't as bad as we all make them out to be. 
<laughs> They're just like us. They do laundry. <laughs> oh, no, not again. <laughs> no, that is a cool story. So, but tell us about the hop water category two segment year to date. Kind of the same thing we were talking about last time. Are you seeing any signs of price fatigue with the economy being the way it is? And even variety fatigue, right? Because there's a growing number of hop waters out there now. Yeah, good question. I think the short answer is no. The hop water category is up 130% year over year. Our brand is up over 600% year over year. And we're actually seeing that accelerate. We're up about 670% in the last in the last four weeks. So I think the short answer is no. And we're seeing that the there's pretty huge macro trends driving this category. When we look at consumers looking to moderate, we look at health and wellness trends, and we look at this coming demographic shift, we feel like there's huge tailwinds behind. When you look at this younger generation, they're moderating even more than millennials or Gen X or boomers. So we see this like massive demographic kind of shift coming that is going to help to propel this category for the long term. And we're really in the early innings. We're building what we believe will be the next billion dollar brand and category. And we'll be building this for decades to come. So no, we're not. And I think as the category is building, having other entrants in the category that make high quality, great products is huge for consumer education. Yeah, that's a lot of jumping off points there because I see that you have the hop water spacer there on your screen, which I tried to order one of those, but it's a giveaway, which is great for your marketing, but <laughs> bad for my gear. Okay. So tell us what this hop water spacer is about. Yeah. So thanks for asking about it. So we just launched this hot water spacer campaign. We think it's really cool. And this was born out of core consumer insight, I think, as you kind of alluded to. All of our marketing is born out of these insights. And one of the top three use educations for hot water is switching between full strength alk and non-alk in the same occasion. It's a great stat out there that 58% of consumers are switching between full strength alk and non-alk in the same occasion. And so we wanted to have fun and kind of play off of that. Now, we kind of think that Gone are the days of the year-long campaign and the three education points. I think what consumers, you want to stop a consumer as they're scrolling through their feed, right? Consumers want marketing to be entertaining and fun. And so we tried to do that, taking this kind of consumer insight and having a little bit of fun with it. So to answer it more specifically, we made these spacers. You can put two 12-ounce standard cans together. You can actually stack multiple. You see kids walking around college games with empty cans of White Claw taped together. Now you'll be seeing them walking around with hot water spaced in between their beers. So you can stack six of them. We know that 4th of July is one of the biggest drinking occasions of the year. And we wanted to give our consumers an opportunity to moderate and have some hot waters and build their hot water and beer staff over the 4th of July holiday. So, and then to, oh, sorry. So to your point about not being able to get it, I'm sorry, we'll make sure to get you some these, these, we ran out, we made only a couple hundred of them and we ran out within 10 minutes when we launched it on our site. Wow. That's a, what a great idea. I like those. I, I would have never thought of that, right? This is one of those things that you know, <laughs> you don't just think about, but then when you see it, you're like, oh, that's, I see that. That's kind of cool. It's better than carrying around a Borg. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah. The Borg. Yeah. A big gallon of milk, but okay. <laughs> Jen, gallon of milk. Ugh. Jen really needs one of those. Jen has like four cans of Something. I yes. Know so, I know. She really does need make, a spacer. It would make table it, it would open up a lot of table space at lunch. Trust <laughs> me on this, Jordan. I mean, good lord. Does the drinks in front of her? The drink that should be a poem. The drinks she's had. The drinks <laughs> that she's having. If, I do yeah. want to point out that Jen, for those that, that are only listening and not on YouTube, Jen has a new neon called Jen's Jams. <laughs> and oh. I don't mean to showboat over here, but <laughs> Let me just show off this fine craftsmanship. I don't know. It showed up on my doorstep. I feel like this might start a little competition here. You know, <laughs> I know. Next time I, see it. I, know. I got it. Be- I do have a couple questions though, from where you, from where we just were. So we talked a little bit about consumer insights between non-alk and alk. I'm wondering, for hot water drinkers, are they also non-alk beer drinkers, or have you seen some of the non-alk beer drinkers kind of gravitate? towards hop water and say, actually, I might want to just drink something like this instead of non-op beer. Yeah, great question. No, yeah, our consumer is definitely a non-op beer drinker. I think our consumer is drinking a lot of different products. 80% of our consumers drink alcohol also. So they're, as I mentioned, they're drinking alcohol, they're drinking hop water, and they're drinking non-op beer. We see that from the basket data that that non-op beer oftentimes be in the basket with hop water. Okay, gotcha. 
And then you were talking about 4th of July coming up. Obviously, that's a huge holiday for beer. Is the summer selling season still peak for y'all too? Does your seasonal trends kind of follow overall beer? Yeah, great question. Yeah, I mean, anytime that it's warm, consumers are drinking hot water. So yes, our our seasonality follows the beer seasonality. I think the difference that you get is that in, we talked about right previously in January, we get a little bit of that counter cyclical sales trend where we get a big pop in in January. And then um, in holidays, we see a nice trend, but not quite as much of a pop as, as beer as consumers are looking to indulge a little bit more in the holidays. Cinnamon hop water, pumpkin hop water coming in. <laughs> that hasn't made it to the top of the innovation list yet. The pumpkin spice. Uh, pumpkin spice latte hop yeah. water. Oh, the, I well, like the ginger, though. It's you know, yeah, it's good. It is good. It's kind of spicy because, you know, it gives you a little fuel kick. Exactly. Yeah, ginger lime is great. We wanted it to be a little bit, have that spice to it. That's my go-to for right. sure. I put Splenda in it. It makes it better. It's, Please tell me that you don't. I'm just kidding. That's a that's a, like an office joke, but oh. Michael Scott used to put Splenda in his scotch. Got it. <laughs> you like get a he'd get a ten year old Glenn Levitt and it's like I have some Splenda. When he does it, it's funny, but when I do it, <laughs> well, anyway, like, yeah. Anyway, it's always great when you explain a joke because that just makes the joke so much better. way funnier. Totally. <laughs> I have a provocative question for you, Jordan. So obviously Constellation has a minority stake and I'm curious like where you're in the gold network houses that also happen to have a B. Do you guys see a bump there? Like, cause though I would assume those wholesalers would be so much more reliant on a product like yours to help make up the difference for other parts of their portfolio that are extra challenged right now. Yeah. I think what's going on there is kind of a bit of a black swan event for the industry. It's not something that we're kind of counting on for building our brand. I think the more impactful thing for our brand is, I mean, we're coming on being three years old, so we're still relatively new. And, you know, these wholesaler partnerships are really important to us and we're working hard to develop those relationships and continue to build on those. And I think what's most important is that when we come in, I come in, We say what we're going to do, and then we do what we're going to say is the thing that builds the most momentum with those partnerships. And we're seeing a lot of traction with the brand, and that makes it easier for wholesalers to put more attention on our brand. So I'd say that's the biggest thing that we're focused on. We're building this brand for decades to come, and so we're investing heavily in those partnerships. And I think I'd say that's the biggest thing that's driving the momentum within those wholesalers. Yeah. Are they starting to build out like a horizontal offerings in the same realm there? Yeah, absolutely. You're starting to see retailers start to build out coffee water sets. And it's really exciting. I think it's great for consumers, right? Because I think part of the education for consumers is where to find this in retail. And we've definitely seen that with best in class wholesalers and retailers starting to lean in and put this as a set within the beer space. And where are you guys? I mean, I think last time we chatted, you said you were in certain weeks, the top such offering in certain channels, but where do you sit now in the most recent read? Yeah. So within the hoppy water space, we're really proud to say that this year we actually took over the number one share space across the category. And so, and there's some really iconic brands within this category. So something that we're really proud that we've achieved. Very good. Well, thank you. Jordan, do you have I'm talking about our Jordan, Jordan number two, Jordanito. I think Jen had one more question. Do you want me Which, to take that one? You can. You Jen? got it, Jay. All you, all day. Well, on the Constellation side of things, obviously they've moved, made some moves within their craft portfolio. Has that translated at all to more focus for you and your company? I think similar to kind of with the wholesalers, I mean, obviously I don't speak for Constellation. I think similar to the wholesalers, just the momentum that our brand is is getting continues to get us more mindshare. They've been great partners, helping us with strategy and introductions and advice. And having someone like that in your corner as you're building a brand that's been there and done it before is extremely valuable. So again, I'd say the most valuable thing for us is just the traction that we continue to get as a brand. Yeah. That momentum begets momentum in this industry, frontwards and backwards. So it's hard to turn a train, hard to turn the Titanic. All right. Well, listen, I hope that all your dreams come true, Jordan. I, uh, Jordan Bass, Jordan, I mean, Jordan Driggers, 
I that was clear. Yeah. I hope I hope I hope some of your dreams come true. But Jordan, thanks for being on, and I'd like to just give a, a quick plug, if I may, to something that we're doing in j- late July, July twenty seventh, to be exact. We will be hosting a webinar, and for a few hundred bucks, you can get access, and it's the Distributor Productivity Summit. And we'll have experts from various fields, including warehouse, delivery, route accounting, and just wholesaling efficiently in general and IT. And so it's 350 bucks. If you don't at least make thousands back, I'll give you your 350 bucks back. That's a hell of a deal. So because you, if you listen to this and you just get one idea from it that saves you a couple thousand, it's, I think it's worth it. And we've kept, we were going to have a full day program. We've cut it to half a day because I just don't think anybody has the bandwidth now these days to sit through a whole day. So we're shortening it up, tightening it up, and we've got some great speakers. I'll leave a link at the end of this podcast if you're watching on YouTube, but basically just go to beernet.com and hit, there's a link, Distributor Productivity Summit at the top. Click on that and it'll take you to where you need to be. Or just email Jessica. Our admin, Jessica, at beernet.com or 210-805-8006, and she will set you up. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you for being on BeerNet Radio, and may all your dreams come true. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks. Cheers. Yeah.